Welcome back guys. I'm glad you guys are joining me here today because what I'm gonna do is review my recent video that I posted where I was watch hunting here in Miami, Florida, specifically in Aventura at the International Jewelers Exchange where I met up with Jonathan and I looked at some of his pieces. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through my video and help you guys understand how you should be as a consumer looking to buy a timepiece and also what you should expect from a gray market dealer. So we're gonna go through my video and see how I was moving, even though that wasn't my intention while I was there, while I was filming, but we're gonna look at it and I'm gonna go through some points that's gonna help you guys, you know, if you're in the market looking for a timepiece and seeking out a gray market dealer. So before we get into the video guys, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And now let's get into it. So I'm gonna be enjoying my coffee today. I got Sergio's, if you guys live in Miami, Florida, I'm sure all you guys know what Sergio's is, where it is, and probably have had their food, really good food too, but their coffee is great. I'm gonna put up on the screen, it's kind of funny, I kind of recorded the person that was making the coffee, and I was pretty much gonna put as a caption, if the person making your coffee looks like this, it's gonna be amazing coffee, and it is. It's uh, Cafe Con Leche, that's what they call it here. And I had it medium, not too strong, not too light. I don't like it like that, just medium, not too sweet, because usually they put a bunch of white sugar in these things. And um, yeah, that's how I have my Cafe Con Leche. I'm saying it like a, like a gringo. But anyways, let's uh, get into it. The title of the video is Tired of the Rolex AD time to go gray market and i started off the video going in to see jonathan with no timepiece in mind i just wanted to see what he had that day and i knew that there were going to be some pieces that i was going to like you know when it comes to being a gray market dealer in this establishment here in aventura at the international jewelers exchange there's so many other watch dealers there so when someone goes into that building it's not just to see one person. Sometimes it's to go, you know, from boot to boot to see what timepieces these people have, which is great for someone like you or me to go in and not just be exclusive to one person and not be able to at least negotiate and go to this person and see what their price is, which is also helpful. It's convenient to have all these watch dealers in one place instead of having to go all the way to this town or city and then go to all the way to the other spot you know this spot have multiple different dealers where some are better than others you know some are more honest and the honest one can let you know like hey that guy his price is a little bit off and you could tell this person yeah that's what he's offering he could be like nah i'll give you like 500 less 200 less so it's a great place uh to get a good deal i'm sure there's places like these in other parts of this you know the u.s but this is just uh the spot that i go to here in aventura in miami now for someone going in that doesn't have a timepiece in mind so you're just gonna be pretty much window shopping going into this gray market dealer you know you could verbalize that to them like i don't know what i'm looking for or i'm looking for a dive watch or i'm looking for a chronograph or i saw this timepiece on ig and i want to see it in person like i mentioned in one of my previous videos what not to do at your Rolex authorized dealer, the things that you can't do at the AD, you can do at your gray market dealer. So speak freely. Of course, don't speak in a way where the gray market dealer is going to think you're dumb and he could take advantage of you. But at the same time, be honest, ask questions. You're there to learn. That's what's going to make you identify a great gray market dealer from a scam artist or someone that's not to be you know trusted too much. I know a lot of you guys do prefer in-person interactions especially when it comes to buying high-end timepieces instead of buying it online so again this is a great example and a good video for you guys when you go into a gray market dealer and his shop or wherever so i'm going in not knowing what timepiece i wanted i'm just browsing looking and what's great is to have a gray market dealer that's not going to be on top of you you know making you feel uncomfortable to be yourself you know to browse and look someone that's patient, that's qualities to look for in your gray market dealer. Someone that's going to not give you an attitude or roll his eyes or breathe heavy. Um, sometimes, yes, there's multiple customers in, you know, in the area. So he has to assist 
a few different people and you have to take that into consideration in mind but yes you want your great market dealer to be patient to answer your question to be knowledgeable and that's how Jonathan is you know he takes his time and if I'm sure he doesn't have an answer to a question he has other dealers there that he's cool with that he's connected with he could go on the phone and have the you know question answered so as I'm browsing I'm looking for pieces vintage pieces specifically I made that clear when I first got there I'm like I'm a vintage guy and he knows that so immediately he goes towards a vintage piece I'm mostly into the, the vintage watches the ones that stood out to me right away is the the bluesy uh, I've talked about this on my channel a few times it's the 16 613 let me show you this one with you maybe right here right look, look look at this one guys now what you don't want your dealer to do is for you to say oh i'm into vintage pieces but he kind of is moving you into something else that's okay afterwards as jonathan did with me i said i want to look at some vintage pieces and that's the first piece the first two three pieces that he showed me and then he showed me like the sky dweller and some other pieces but just what I was looking for is what he presented to me. And that's something that you want with your gray market dealer. Someone that's listening, someone that understands you, uh, someone that's going to kind of see where your head is based on your lifestyle, your career, your, your leisure activities. You want a gray market dealer like that. So here I'm looking at multiple different pieces. Sure, I wanted to show you guys some pieces so that you could show him some love and go to his shop or reach out to him and hopefully buy a piece but for myself I wanted to see the subs I wanted to see the Omega Speedmaster in person I wanted to figure out how it looks on my wrist when it comes to Speedmasters there's so many different references out there that some fit differently on your wrist there's you know slight changes into the case size maybe the lug to lug may be different uh, the height of the timepiece may be different so it was nice to see an Omega Speedmaster that looked amazing on my wrist. So currently, right now, I have Speedmaster all in my head. That's the timepiece that might be my next piece. And it's far different from my Omega Constellation that I have right now because this is a 34 millimeter size dress watch and the Speedmaster is more of a sports timepiece. It's more casual and larger, of course. It's a 42 millimeter size case. But as you guys see, it fits my wrist perfectly as far as the largest size timepiece that I feel comfortable with having on my wrist. But anyways, as I showed in the video, I'm showing multiple different pieces, not just the timepieces that I'm into. The timepiece that I was into was, of course, the Rolex Datejust, the Rolex Daydate. Both of these pieces are 36 millimeter size in case the GMTs, the root beer, the brown colored dial with the... Oh, beautiful bezel and the bluesy the submariner that's a blue dial blue bezel two-tone beautiful piece i've had one of those already i owned it for about a year and a half two years loved it but it was definitely a flashy piece it's a miami piece for sure that's a timepiece if you want to stand out if you want to be seen it's a timepiece to to wear for sure it's beautiful 100 percent next piece was as i mentioned again the sky dweller that jonathan showed me I do not like the sky dweller. I'll be blunt, I'll be honest. And that's something you have to be with your gray market dealer. You're not gonna hurt his feelings. <laughs> it's not his personal timepiece. And if even if it is, who cares? That's your opinion, let him know. The sky dweller, it's a beautiful piece visually. I love the, the layout and the design of the dial. This one that he showed me was beautiful with that green dial, but just that case size is too big. Uh, the overall dimensions, the height, the lug to lug, just too substantial on my wrist. It probably looks good on someone else's wrist, but for mine, I would say, no, no, not for me. And that's just, you know, my personal opinion. So as you guys saw throughout the video, hopefully you saw that video. If not, I'll link it down in the description box below. The interaction and the experience is pleasant. Jonathan would even offer you coffee. He would offer you a cafecito or something like that. Where you feel welcomed. You know, not every gray market dealer is going to be like that. And it's not special treatment to me. 
that's just how he treats his customers. So I'm also going to link his Instagram down in the description box below. Um, so you guys could check out his inventory and have access to reach out to him. Uh, but anyways, two more points that I want to mention in the video. I showed you guys some ladies pieces. I wanted to do that because I did make a video where I was saying to you guys that the average woman should definitely wear a 29, a 31 millimeter size timepiece. I believe that's the perfect size wristwatch for a woman. Yes, some could pull off a 40 because their wrist size is close to mine or even bigger, but I still think that a 29, a 31, 33 millimeter size is the most elegant and optimal size for the average woman. He ain't lying. That's the key word. It's the most optimal size. Even though it works, a 40 millimeter could work on somebody's wrist, it could, but it doesn't fit, doesn't look right. And that's my point in that video. So the last point though is the AP Royal Oak. This is a timepiece that was the biggest no-no for me. I don't even know what size that was. I think it was maybe like a 44 or 45 millimeter size case. That was just absolutely not for me. That's for somebody that's maybe like 300 pounds or just a bodybuilder with just huge arms. The timepiece wasn't heavy. It was, you know, definitely something that's wearable, but just visually it was too big. I hope you guys could see that in the video. If you guys don't think that timepiece is too big for my wrist, comment down below and I, I would know where your head is when it comes to watch sizes and timepieces because the Sky Dweller and this is definitely too large for my wrist. And my wrist is a little over seven inches, um, which is a modest size, but still these timepieces are too big. I don't know why uh, AP made timepieces that large. It just doesn't make sense to me. But comment down below. I know you guys did like this uh, AP Royal Oak in the comment section of that video. Uh, it's a beautiful piece, but just like the Sky Dweller, the Rolex Sky Dweller, this is one that I wish it would be in a 40 millimeter size. If Rolex made the Sky Dweller in a 40 millimeter size case, so many more people, sales will go through the roof. Most people would start desiring that timepiece, but it's just too big. It's too big for the average person. Anyways, guys, I want you guys to comment down below and let me know your experience. If you had a positive one or a negative one at a gray market dealer, I've always had positive experiences at gray market dealers. The only negative experiences I've had when it comes to watch interactions was at the Rolex AD. So comment down below and let me know. Um, and yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I don't want this video to be too long. Remember, give the video a subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, turn your notification on so you can know whenever I post these videos because sometimes you won't even know I post a video. And yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.